It's game day. Mm -hmm. Big, big game today. Love, mo six, love Monday happy hour games. Pre-6 p.m. kickoffs. Oh, They're the, the best. thing of beauty. Now, here's the thing. We were talking about it for most of the first hour of the show today. Uh, in a lot of ways, you can almost say the season kind of hinges on this one for Washington if they want to keep pace with the Giants. Uh, big win over Seattle yesterday, which really puts – Washington in a hole here. Now, the good news is, as we've talked about, Pittsburgh coming off a short week uh, with that Wednesday game against the Ravens. Um, but they are undefeated. They're scoring 28 a game. And even though Washington's doing some things well, they certainly got their work cut out for them. Uh, they've got their scoring average up to 22 points per game. Alex Smith is playing, uh, I would say, solid. Um, Washington's 3-2 and two in their last five. Maybe the biggest surprise has been the emergence of Antonio Gibson, right? He's been a huge factor for them. Uh, I, I think Cakes, uh, you, you may know sort of off the top of your head, what's he average, about four, four and a half yards per carry, something 4. like 6, that? 4.6, and yeah. you know, he's coming off, the obviously, his career highs in just Washington smashing Dallas on Thanksgiving. He had... 20 carries. He had mm -hmm. 25 touches. He was targeted seven times in the passing game. He had three touchdowns. I mean, he was he was the focal point of the offense. Right. He's, so he's going to be a key uh, factor, I'm sure, for for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's going to they're going to obviously going to try to slow down Gibson. Right. That'll be probably their number one goal. Um, and then they're going to get to the quarterback. I mean, one th sort of calling card for Washington's defense has been their ability to pressure the quarterback. I think when you look at them statistically around the league, they're about fifth in sacks. So Washington has 36 sacks, which is actually actually tied for third. But you know who's first? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh yeah. So it's going to be a big challenge for Washington's offensive line, which I thought going into the season would be a huge sieve for Washington, but they've performed admirably. Um, Morgan Moses has moved around. He's played much better than he did last year. Brandon Sheriff, uh, if you look at Pro Football Focus's uh, ratings, I believe he's in the top five uh, for guards for how he's played. And Chase Rouillet is up there too, also playing very well, rated highly. Uh, I think even Schweitzer it has played admirably, too, when you look at sort of how he grades out with pro football focus. So that's going to be the key right there. How does Washington's offensive line hold off those monsters for Pittsburgh that can pressure and get to the quarterback? Well, I think part of it is, is going to fall on the, the running backs as far as quick pass catching out of the backfield. I think you're going to see an uptick in McKissick's involvement today because – as you mentioned, you don't want that pressure coming down on Alex Smith. And what's the quickest way to get the ball out? Get it to McKissick. Get it to Gibson. Maybe a little bit of Logan Thomas in there. There aren't mm. going to be a lot of long developing plays downfield for Terry McLaurin and company. I think Look, the Steelers a, a, get after the quarterback, but they took a huge hit losing Bud Dupree. He was our second leading sack guy with eight sacks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Bud Dupree's out towards ACL. You know, you still got to deal with T.J. Watt, who's got He's 11 on the year. He's really and good. I'm not saying that they're not going to get after him, but that's a huge hit for the Steelers' defense. Yeah. yeah. And then offensively for Pittsburgh, you just assume that Ben, even though he's older and he's had some injuries and he's battling you know, that knee issue, whatever that is. Well, I think also, does, he, is he wearing a boot too? He's just not going to make – now, he can make physical mistakes, but he's not going to make the mental mistakes. I mean, he's but, too good. He get rid, gets rid of the ball. He never gets sacked. Um, there's a good balance there for, in, offensively for them. They're just well-coached. You got to play your A plus game to beat. They're them. only averaging, giving up seventeen points per game, Pittsburgh. So you got to do yeah. some work this to score be points sledding. against them. Yeah, and and you don't want to fall behind because Washington got the win last week. They finally grabbed the lead in the first half, and that allowed them to keep feeding the ball to Antonio Gibson. You don't want to fall behind in this game and let those pass rushers come right after you. But look, I think that Pittsburgh. The things that Washington has going for them relating to Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh's coming off a short week. They lost Bud Dupree, so they don't have their second leading sack guy. And uh, I don't know. Like, Ben, if you watched the game last week, he did not look good against the Ravens. He didn't look good. Right. No doubt. Uh, you know, but that's a, even more of a reason to think that they're going to come back and, and look sharp, even though they, the had short, theory? they had a short week. Yeah, if you uh, want to chime in. They, they focused on that. Although Ben, I don't think, practiced. Yeah. Well, he's actually listed as questionable, but I know we all assume he's going to play. 
Um, also, Terry yeah, McLaurin gone. listed as questionable, but again, we're assuming he's going to play. He's yeah, been kind of listed that way the last couple weeks. They're both going to go. He's and he dealing comes. with a lingering ankle injury. Well, Seems J- like he's been able to get through it during practice. Jay Glazer on the Fox pregame said yesterday that he talked to Tomlin, and Tomlin said, yeah, he's questionable just because he's got this knee problem and he's old and he needs time <laughs> off, but he's going to go. Yeah. If yeah. you want to chime in, 800-636-1067, do you think Washington has a shot to beat the Steelers, and how do they do it? Let's go to our pal Kevin from Glory Days. He's a Steelers guy. Oh, What's really? up, Kevin? I'm sure he has a real unbiased hey, what's opinion. What's going on, guys? <laughs> what's up? Hey, uh, well, I'd be lying if I didn't say I was concerned. I'm not scared, but I'm quite concerned about Washington's running game and their passing game. Um, I'm real concerned about the, Bud Debris being out, and they also are out with uh, Devin Bush. And they gave up a ton of yards both games against um, – uh, Baltimore. Um, I think the only thing they have going is to it's coming back. It's in Pittsburgh. I don't think Washington has won since 1991 in Pittsburgh. So I think that's what they got. But I'm quite concerned. Um, I'm just looking for Tomlin to get get their act together because last week was was horrible. And coming off a four a four day rest against Washington has nine days. Um, yeah, I'm I'm concerned. Hmm. To it's the other defensive end who's got I think nine sacks. I have so, a couple uh, uh, betting angles for you, for you. Uh, we touched on this earlier in the week, mm-hmm. uh, but since the start of the 2019 season, Washington is two and five straight up and against the spread against teams from the AFC. Um, Washington has also gone seven and three though uh, against the spread when they're underdogs of 10 or more. Meanwhile, the Steelers, when they're favored by double digits, They've gone one and seven, so against the spread. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the number is right now. Last I saw it was about eight and a half or nine. It's dropped to six and a half. Is it dropped that much? So it's yeah. nowhere near what it was earlier in the week. Um, yeah. No, so. no, no. Yeah, it's dropped. A lot of the money, seventy one percent or seventy two percent of the uh, public money coming in on Washington right on now. Washington By the way, do you want a nugget now. from our friends at BetQL? Yes. Ron Rivera's teams have gone 13 and two straight up, coming off a double-digit road win in his career. Right, who, who, J, J, Drabby, can you find the uh, J.P. Finley nugget? He tweeted it about how Washington does after they score 40 points. That was a, a dreary nugget. It was not. I think one it was that they lost their last six times. Yeah, it's something gross. We're if gonna have J.P. Finley it. on, by the way, in 10 minutes. By yeah. the way, also Ron Rivera's teams have gone 45 and 21 against the spread, coming off of a road game in his career. That's good. That's that's <laughs> really good. Uh, let me see. The under is seven and one cakes in Washington's last eight games Ooh, versus a team unders, with boring. a winning record. It's also 3-0-1 in the Steelers' last four games overall. So, so what is the total right now? 42 and a half. Ooh. Yeah. Shocker, I picked the over on the fatties on yeah, Friday. Yeah, you did. I need did. a points bonanza tonight in, in the Steel City. This I don't know. Since Alex t- has taken over, and clearly the offense has picked up, um, you can even see statistically they're now averaging – 380 yards per game since Alex took over versus an average of 325 before. So even though Alex isn't putting up big numbers, he did that one game, right? What did he pass for? He had, 390. Yeah, 390 in that one game. You um, think he bragged about his 390 in the locker room? Like I doubt somebody it. whose name I won't mention? You think right. he hyped it up? Uh, Just and remember, Anto- it's been a dog year in the NFL. Big it time. has. And Antonio Gibson, who we touched on earlier – uh, is averaging five yards per carry, and let me see. He's got seven scores since Alex took over. So a lot of his production has gone way up. What is kind of disturbing, and I know we know this sort of intuitively, but it really is shocking when you look at sort of the breakdown of the distribution. So Terry McLaurin's got 102 targets, right? And he should, right? He's their best, arguably their best player, uh, most explosive receiver. After that, the next highest receiver with targets, with targets? is now not counting Logan Thomas, right? He's a McKissick. tight end. Right, a wide receiver. Well, yeah, I'm talking about the wide receiver oh, okay. is Dontrell Inman with 28 targets. Yeah. So you go from targeting McLaurin. So if you take McLaurin out, if you can focus on him, they don't have any other targets at receiver 
that have got more than 28. All right. Well, that's they got why no they other need, weapons. That's why they need to pick a receiver within the first. I would I would say two or three rounds oh, of yeah. the upcoming draft. Hundred percent, they will. You can't just keep trotting out Cam Sims and Dontrell Inman and expect to, to have a dynamic offense. You need another real threat opposite McCoy. I mean, they were hoping McKissick, guy. McKissick Jeff and Bidette, Gibson. Cakes, McKissick Bidette, and Gibson have a combined like 107 one. targets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Antonio Gandy-Golden. We were hoping for – I know. We were hoping for Antonio Gandy-Golden, but he's uh, he's got one catch this year. It's been targeted likes. four times. 2020 is the lost year for, for AGG. It's yeah, gonna have it's to be twenty twenty one. Just this not working out. He's trending towards Josh Doxonville. Well, Buzz, right now he'd kill, he would kill for Josh Doxon. Too early. Yeah, right too now, early. Josh Doxon laughs at him. <laughs> but they're going to draft. Re, they're going to draft a receiver if not in the first round and definitely in the second. They I need they to have, second or third. They, Inman's got twenty eight targets. Isaiah Wright's got twenty seven. Steven Sims has been banged up with injury. He's only got nineteen. Camp Sims, who's come on of late, is as. 15 targets. They don't have any receiving threats that you really have to be worried about outside of McLaurin. You've kind of come around on that. We've been telling you that since week well, one. Well, I like EB. them. I like some of those guys and their skill sets, but they're just they're not targeted consistently. They're just random. Because they don't get open consistently. Well, I think also partly is because they've been hurt. Isaiah Wright's been hurt. He's not explosive, but, you know, I think he can make plays. Steven Sims has been hurt. Hmm. Inman is just, they just fill him in. They just plug him in when they have to. He's a jag. I mean, yeah. he just is. He's a guy who was signed in August and thrown yeah. out of the roster. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I don't want to be too down, but I'm trying not to get, I, they, you know. They, they've got, <laughs> you don't want to be. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard because I, I feel well, like we're going to lose. So. You're expecting a loss. And that's yeah, it's hard do. to get excited. You're bracing yourself. Yeah, it's hard to get excited. I feel like we're going to lose. It's a shame. We blew two games against the Giants, and it's going to come back to haunt us. Something has to be unexpected tonight for them to win. I mean, Ben's got to throw no a doubt. couple picks. You know, they've got to create short fields. Gibson has to have another great game. Maybe, uh, they, could, maybe they could pressure, you know, Ben into a quick throw, and somebody can jump a route, and remember my know, Jimmy Friday, Moreland can run back in for a pick six or something. My Friday bold prediction, getting to the over, basically is going to require each team to have a defensive score. I just feel like <laughs> Chase your Young has to make play. <laughs> so you think it's going to be a low-scoring dud tonight? No, no, Kate? I think it's, I no, picked he, the over. over. I'm no. over the number. That's I'm the only guy on the planet. There's nothing like a predicting an over, but ha needing two defensive yeah, touchdowns that's to get what I'm there. Saying. That's part of my that's part of my uh, <laughs> formula of getting to the over. Yeah, because Ricky. defensive because defensive touchdowns are quite common. So when they're someone says bank, trust the me. only way they're going to hit the over is by getting a defensive touchdown, no, two, I would think two like, defensive one touchdowns. One on each side. Well, then you then you should be betting the under. <laughs> it's a flawed system, and I'll never pick an under ever. It'll play never the, happen. Play the lotto, gigs. Well, <laughs> he does. I probably should. I mean, Drav, you've seen the numbers of late? They're over $200 million each.